Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Dan the Fix-It Man. Got another quick video here for you. I'm going to show you how to change your front brake pads and your front brake rotors on a 2007 Honda Accord. This happens to be the four-cylinder model. Now the first thing I like to do is push this caliper piston back in just with using a screwdriver in through this little opening right here and pulling that towards you which will pry that caliper piston back in, pushing the brake fluid back up through the system into our master cylinder. Now before we do that, it's a good idea to pop the hood and take a look and see, see if you've got room for that excess fluid in the master cylinder. So here's our master cylinder and you can see if you look closely the line right down there. This looks like there's enough room for me to be able to push the fluid back in and have it rise up through here. Uh, if this were already all the way full, you could use a little turkey baster or a syringe to suck out some of that fluid or even just a wrapped up rag or paper towel that's clean and put it in there. That will wick some of the fluid out as well. So you can see we've got plenty of room there. We can push the caliper pistons back in. Just grab a standard flathead screwdriver, maybe even a mini pry bar, and we're just gonna put it in through this opening and pull that towards you. Now it will slowly pry and press that caliper piston back inside the caliper. There we go. You see now we've got a little bit more space in there for the new pads. Now I didn't mention, but it's a good idea to turn the wheel to the left when you're doing the driver's side and to the right when you're doing the passenger side. It just gives you a little bit more room in here to work. Now we can loosen and remove these two caliper pin bolts. Now these are a 12 millimeter. I'm just gonna use this uh, little 3 8 drive impact from Milwaukee. And that's what those bolts look like. And set those aside. And then we can take off the caliper. I've just got these little hooks that come in handy with hanging, hanging calipers up and out of the way. Now you might have noticed uh, a little issue here. There's some stuff missing. These normally have little V springs on them uh, that will push these pads out and prevent them from dragging on the rotor. Also, this rotor, you'll notice, is not attached to the hub. It usually has these little tapered screws I happen to have some spare Honda rotor screws and so we'll we'll put these on or we'll put two of these on. But a lot of times those are missing because they get stripped out. They're very difficult to take out. I didn't know that they were gone, but I was going to show you my new tool here. This is an impact made in Japan. It's a vessel. It's pretty awesome. You just put this in and strike the back of it right there with a hammer. And what it does is, is it it's an impact, but it also it turns this a few degrees counterclockwise to help loosen that and this is the size that you need it's the uh, it's the p3 is what they call it but it's uh, these are Japanese industry standard screws they're not Phillips they look like Phillips but so if you do have the screws there it, it's helpful if you have this tool to remove them sorry I didn't get a chance to show you that today but uh, I'm sure I'll use it on another video but we can pull our pads out So there's still enough pad material here, but the reason I'm changing these is our, our rotors are warped and we've got a little bit of a shake. You can see they're very glazed over. I could potentially turn them, but the, the new rotors were so cheap, I just got new ones. And these are starting to pulsate or shake in the, in the brake pedal, it's kind of shuddering. And that's usually a sign of warped rotors. Now we can take off this uh, caliper bracket, see if this will fit in here again. This is a 17 millimeter. That's a bummer, which this is kind of the main reason I got it. It won't take these off. We'll just have to break them loose the old fashioned way. The torque on these is 79 foot pounds. So yeah, they're tight, but I thought this thing would have taken them off. We'll just spin them off the rest of the way. Nah, that caliper's kind of in the way. I guess we'll just use, just undo them this way. These, these are the bolts, we're gonna reuse these as well. And in this case, the rotor was loose. 
a lot of times these get stuck on there and uh, you got to hit them with a hammer or you see we've also got these these threaded holes right here and that allows you to put a little bolt in there and press the caliper off off of the face of that hub now we can get this cleaned up some safety goggles here I'm just gonna clean off the hub here just to make sure that's not gonna get stuck a lot of times I'll just hit that with a little wire brush like this that works as well and really you're just wanting to make sure that the face of this is is clean so that that will seat on there and not get stuck or frozen a lot of times these really will just get stuck on there so wire wheel works pretty well or just a, a little wire brush is fine too now the brakes I'm using today are actually part of a kit right here it's these uh, max advanced brakes this is the OE rotor replacement comes uh, packed in a little bit of oil it's a good idea to wipe that down before you put it on with some uh, some brake cleaner and that just cleans all that packing oil or whatever grease that is off of the rotor itself you just line up the little tapered holes right there and you can see we've got a place for our new screws. I'll get a link to these to these in the description. It's just these little Mission Automotive replacement Honda screws. Not a bad idea to have some of these on hand if you have a Honda or if you plan on doing a brake job on a Honda because it's very common for those to strip out. I'm just going to use that same impact screwdriver here just to put those on. I really like to get those snug so that that will be really really well seated on the face of that hub now I know obviously the lug nuts are gonna hold that there as well but and a lot of times I do see these missing but you know it came that way from the factory I don't know if that was just for assembly from the factory but uh, I just always put them back in now this is what our pad kit looks like here again from the max advanced brakes there's the part number for you but these ones, check it out, they do come with new hardware. So I'm gonna get that opened up and change those out. And it's nice that we've got these little replacement uh, replacement V springs there that we're missing. Now, like I mentioned, we're gonna change the hardware here. We can just pull these old clips out. And again, this is where we wanna hit this with the wire brush, get that really clean. This little wire wheel comes in handy for that too. Alright, that looks good. Now we're also going to pull out and clean these slide pins. So just kind of pull back on that rubber boot and pull these out. That old grease just kind of gets gummed up and dirty in there. Look at that. You know, the brake dust just kind of seems to find its way in there as well and yeah that one's kind of sticky so we'll just I'm putting the pin back in a couple times to try to get some more of that excess grease out of there I've just got a little tightly rolled up little paper towel here or rag and just trying to run that in there as well because that grease in there I can tell is bad it's it's real sticky somebody probably used the wrong kind of grease and that will bind these pins up and then that'll cause your brakes to, to drag just try to get as much of that excess old grease out of there and then what you want to use is like a silicone paste or silicone based grease something that's meant for caliper slide pins I mean I always use the sil glide stuff I'll show you what it looks like they sell it at Napa, at, uh, Napa too but here's this this is the company that makes it the AGS Napa uh, you know, they privately label it for Napa, but there's a slide pin all cleaned up. Put a little bit of that grease on there. That's about all it takes. And I'll just kind of spread that around on a clean part of my glove. And 
and then we can put that right back in just kind of spin it a few times kind of disperse that grease and that feels a lot better it's not it's not all sticky like it was oh, this one's really stuck in there too yep so this one has got this little rubber bushing on the end and what's happened is this is swollen a little bit and so it's pretty pretty stuck in there you see that see how that little rubber end has got these little relief cuts or relief divots in there as I tint spin that around what happens is that allows the air or the pressure to release as this goes in and right now this is swollen and so what I'm gonna do is just make a little bit deeper cut here with a razor blade I did this on another Honda video as well and it does seem to do the trick of course I'll get this all cleaned up and clean out that sleeve but if you can just do a little a little relief cut there with a razor blade or something sharp be careful you know don't cut yourself but that little deeper cut that allows the air that's trapped in there to escape because otherwise that compressed air will push outward and push your caliper up against the uh, push the pads up against the rotor and they'll drag Pull that out. There we go. And of course, we'll get this one all cleaned up here too. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't stick. I'll, I'll test it here in a minute. But we're going to also clean out the inside of where that slide pin goes. I'm sure there's a tool for this. I just don't have it. And you can, you know, you can pull these rubber boots off and get them out of the way, but... I'm just going to leave them on there while I do this. Again, if you if you end up with something like this or a stuck slide pin, it'll hang up your brakes and they'll wear they'll wear out quick. They'll drag. You'll probably warp your rotors, and that's probably what happened here. You know, if you guys know of a tool for this, just go ahead and put that down in the comments. That would be helpful. There we go. That's about all the junk I'm getting out of there. All right, got some more of that Sil Glide here on the glove. Just kind of spread that around that clean slide pin. And then we'll put it back in and see how it does. Yeah, it's still, that's still pretty stuck. All right, so I'm gonna try another relief cut. If that doesn't work, I'm just gonna toss this. It's just there to reduce some of the noise but yeah, you can see the end of it is even kind of flared out here. I'll just try to trim it just a little bit more, see if that works. And this would be real easy to cut yourself, so just don't do that. All right, let's try that again. Hey, that worked. That's uh, feels a lot better. Still has that rubber bushing in there. and it's not pushing out too too far or too hard. That's about what we want. Okay. A lot of you guys have made some comments about this little spot right here. I've had some people say that they put a little bit of this same grease underneath these caliper clips. And I thought, you know, I don't think it'll hurt. So I'm just gonna do a little bit underneath there as well. And get our hardware. See if that's the right one. Nope. Alright, that's too wide. There we go. So they send, looks like they're sending two sets of this hardware. There we go. The kit includes uh, an extra set of this hardware, probably for different models, or probably for the V6 models, a slightly different caliper bracket. But uh, those do fit nice. And here I'm also going to put a little bit more of this Sil Glide. Oops. Before I put it on, it's a little bit easier just to put a little bit in this little notch here. I'm going to get the ends of the brake pads here too, but 
nice to have a little bit of grease right there. Now this is ready to go back on. Just be careful not to get any grease on the rotor. Now the torque spec on these caliper bracket bolts is 79. Well, it's actually 79.6. but definitely not 80. That would be too tight. Just kidding. Here's the torque wrench I'm using if you're curious. It's this gear wrench 85062. Uh, it's a nice torque wrench. I like it. Okay now for the new pads and here again with this sill glide. I just like to put a little bit on the back of the shim here. It's got this nice shim which helps cut down on some noise but this sill glide it just seems to eliminate the friction which causes some of those squeaks and noises and brake pads. So it doesn't take a lot. Thin layer and a little, little bit at each end. And then we can just carefully put that in here. I didn't point out, but this is the one you can see on the inside pad of the old one. That's where they had their noise maker on the, on the bottom. So I just oriented that the same direction. And same thing with this outside pad. Just a little thin layer of that sill glide, and then a bit at each end. Careful not to get that on the brake surface. If you do, just wipe it off. And press that into place. Sometimes whatever sill glide is left on my glove, I'll just kind of wipe it here on the inside face of these, uh, the caliper, and a little bit on the, the actual face of the caliper piston where it rides and rubs up against the pad. A lot of brake dust and junk built up underneath here. Kind of wiping that out. All right, and then we can put these V springs in. You see these little holes here in the end of the pads. Now you need to have one hand compressing the pads in. I'm gonna try to do it from up here so you can see. And then you just put those little springs into the ends of the pad like that. Let's see if I can do this one here too. Perfect. All right, and then the trick is to keep your hands on that. If you let go, these are just gonna spring out. And then we gotta get the caliper. Take off that little hook there. So we gotta get the caliper over those to hold them together, hold them in place. There we go. Sometimes you gotta pull on that slide pin a little bit to get that to line up like so. And then we can get these little caliper bolts started by hand. Now the torque spec on this is 26 foot pounds for the four cylinder. It's 37 foot pounds for the V6. And you're done. Now just remember to step on the brake pedal a few times which will push this caliper piston back out, pressing those pads up against the rotor where they need to be. Now when you do this, don't press the brake pedal all the way to the floor. That could damage the seals in your master cylinder. Once you do that and the pedal feels firm, go ahead and top off the master cylinder and make sure that that's at the appropriate level. And then just double check and make sure you have everything torqued per spec. Hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up this brake kit with the rotors and pads, along with some of the parts and tools used in the video as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.